Yeah. All right, man, we got the quick shots right out the gate, coach. Sweet potato pie or pumpkin pie? Oh, man, uh, I'm going to have to go sweet potato. Thank you, sir. I was going to say. Go, I'm going to have to go sweet potato. Please give me the right answer. You just did. All right, favorite sport to watch just as a fan? Favorite sport to watch as a fan? I'd probably have to say football. Okay, I can see that. Favorite sport to coach? Because I know you, you, you know, you coach quite a few sports, man. I do cover a few of them. Uh, obviously, basketball is probably the... the the most intense, uh -huh. most passionate about, right. as far as the competitive side and getting kids prepared. But I, I, I'm a, softball is fun, man. Softball yeah. is a fun sport. That, that, that's what you say. That'd be your favorite one to coach if you had to pick one. I mean, if I had to pick one, yeah. it, it probably had to end up being baseball. But I'm just saying, don't sleep on softball. Softball is fun. Softball can be enjoyable. Them, them girls are awesome. Yeah, they get busy. They get yeah. busy. What's your, what would you say your biggest hobby is outside of sports? Ah. Whenever you're not in the gym or on the field instructing, what could what could you catch Charles Hunt doing? Man, I'm I'm always doing that. So I would yeah. say being with the family, being with the kids, and, and trying to you know I go fishing. I'm country, so there you go. You know we're gonna go fishing and do some things like that. I try to get into the movie scene. I'm a big horror movie person. Hey, <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I love horror movies, old school all the way up. Uh, but mainly, you know, just trying to relax, man. Trying to relax, decompress, try mm -hmm. to separate the two. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy my youngsters and, and watch my kids grow with a 16 year old and. A, 80 year old, eight year old now. I'm about to say 80 year old. Right? <laughs> like, whoa, you've been around a long time. Yeah, I'm a vampire. <laughs> there you go. Now, last one. This may be, this may speak right to you. What's the, when's the last time you had to cuss somebody out? Whether you had to get on one of your kids oh, yeah, or one my of your son. students? That was probably, that was probably yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah, <laughs> don't leave that bike out there no more, boy. That's somebody gonna steal that bike. I'm telling you, boy. Yeah, man, get it out the street. What is you doing? I, yeah. had, to, I had to learn that lesson as a kid. Like, man, people ain't good just because they're supposed to be. Yeah, so you don't yeah. put that bike up. Yeah, get <laughs> off that game, man. You know, uh, you know, obviously, you try to avoid getting to that emotional level. Yeah. But sometimes it, it proves the point. Hey, I'm frustrated. Yeah. You know, your actions are not acceptable. <laughs> no, I, need you, I need you to feel me right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, now we got that problem. out the way. Right hand of fellowship. You yeah, know what I mean? Now we can man. get rolling. Let, let's, let's stay into see. the on, let's stay on the parental scene, man, because you know I'm becoming more, I don't want to say fascinated, but I'm more and more curious uh with, with the more parents that I talk to. Because I'm not a parent and but I've been I've been seeing different styles of parenting and I've I've um I've seen them work differently. And as a kid you only know what was done to you when you were growing up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now in this day and age where um Kids like to know why all the time. When we sort of came up, you did what you were told. Yeah. But how do you how do you know the difference whenever they're asking something because they really are curious and they want to know, or when they're just being an ass? You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel you. How do you handle uh, that with your kids? Ah, uh, you know, it's it's you got to take the approach. Now they have more access to information, so of course the curiosity is going to be a little bit more. Uh, hyped up so to speak i yep. still have that old school my daddy was born in 1932 so mm. you know you know I, I still i was raised with that old school like you said it is uh what i said you don't need to worry about why and i still have a little bad in me sometimes you know daddy where we going boy just ride. just ride yeah yeah you don't need to know everything uh <laughs> i used to hate that answer man. yeah yeah you're gonna be all right just ride but uh you know a lot of it boils down to just trying to pay attention to your kids knowing your kids having a little bit of uh that outside that parental relationship with them and a lot of people don't agree with it a lot of people don't don't see it but dealing with kids as long as i have you know you're talking almost 16 years now so in the ju ju justice system and, and seeing them and in, in, in all those different facets of life right when it comes to my own kids i don't want them to be influenced by anything that doesn't have his best interest in mind so mm -hmm. when it comes to my daughter and my son i'm just like you know what I'll explain stuff to you, even in situations I wouldn't have got an explanation right. because I want you to know because I don't want that influence to come from another sector, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to know why, and I know it's legitimate, you know, you got to decipher between, I got to kind of read between the lines. Yeah. I'll go ahead and explain it to you. And I do way more of that because I do it with all the kids I deal with. So I do that way more than than say we got exposed to. I feel know, that. My dad don't need to explain that to me, <laughs> you know, but I, I want my kids to get, since there's so much information out there, they can go Google it. I don't, want you, I don't want you to rely on Google for the answers. Right, and there's always a lot more than just the bottom line. Like there's always a little extra in there, some little nuances, mm -hmm. some reasons why things are 
that only only Google can't give it to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? You'd have to give it to them. Yeah, it's just like if I was to say, hey, how are we going to build this building? Nobody's going to really talk about elevations and how the floor needs to be laid or the temperature to lay certain stuff. They just, oh, you put a screw there and you put that wall up and there it is. You know? Right, and you think it's that easy, but nah. Yeah, it ain't that easy. So sometimes you got to give them an explanation. I feel that. Which one of your Which one of your kids would you say is pretty much down to you? And what I mean is, I know it's me and my brother. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm the oldest and my brother, he's the mama's boy. They real tight besties you know what i mean and i'm the daddy's boy me and him real tight you know yeah. which one would you say is daddy's boy or daddy's girl in your uh, home i'm gonna say uh you know my son my kids a big age difference so i okay. got a 16 year old and eight year old which one is which 16 daughter year old. daughter, daughter, daughter 16 right. yeah yeah daughter 16 love her to death she's doing well proud of her eight year old son you know he, he's a mama boy he's, okay you know, he's been kind of babied uh, rightfully so, I understand, you know, grandparents and everybody love them to death. Great kid. Uh, but I would say my daughter's probably more like me in some ways. Mm-hmm. Our, our personalities are very similar in right. how we handle certain situations. You know, they both love daddy to death and they both be on me, uh, you know, in a, in a different ways. But True I, that. You know, I, it's tough to say with that age gap. You know, I if it you. was a little bit closer, I think I would see that that emotional, you know, grab from one or the other, you uh-huh. know what I'm saying, or vice versa. But with that gap, man, I, I, you know, my daughter is first and foremost that 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 anchor, you know what I mean, to mm. me. I you feel know, that. And then my son is kind of the icing on the cake. You know, he's kind of that my little man, and, and I get to see him growing. But he a ball of energy, too, ain't he? Yeah, all, yeah, all day, man. He want to ride a bike or play basketball or football or catch or playing in the mud like he was yesterday. He, he's all over the place. <laughs> now, are, are your kids athletes? The yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, my son, my son plays everything. You know, I'm just kind of like, since I do this for a living, it's, I'm not, I'm a parent. You know, I'm a, I stand in, I'm That's exactly stand, what I was going to ask next. Yeah, <laughs> shades on. I'm a parent. I don't right. care what. He bats in the lineup. I don't right. care if he starts. I don't care about any of that. I want to be a parent. I want to see him work hard. I want to see him encourage his teammates. I want to see him listen to his coaches. I want to see him hustle. You know, I want to see that work ethic. I want to see those intangibles that I know is going to play a different role when everybody can do all these these uh, these physical skill sets. Um, but I'm a straight parent. You know, my daughter, she she got into playing a little bit of sports, but, you know, she she's more of a – She's into the books and mm. thinking, you know, a different perspective. She's right. in photography. She's in the, hey, oh right. yeah, cooking. She makes a cheesecake, man. She won like <laughs> a county cook-off. Straight up. Age, like three years in a row, man. This cheesecake is delicious. Yeah, And I was like, baby girl, I'm telling you this because I love cheesecake. Like, right. This is legit. This is legit. Yeah, yeah. We've talked about maybe trying to put a few together and let people taste and she can mm. do her own thing. But, you know, she wants to get in the medical field. She wants to go into nursing and deal with babies and things of that nature so Man. she kind of scrapped the sports but right. my son being young you know and he, he he's he's got some natural talent to him you know it's but at, at the same time he's eight years old I, I don't get caught up in i understand youth athletics today yeah and i don't try to get caught up in, in trying to overdo it mm-hmm. and go play for your teams go have fun i'm gonna be a parent i'm gonna be here to cheer you on and be here to celebrate with you uh, give you some advice, but at right. the same time, I'm not gonna be running on these coaches and asking them why is he not starting. <laughs> right. Thank you for he, that. Yeah, yeah. Cause you know man. we deal with that all the time, man. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> even even when I see a coach that may, you know, um, how can I put it, struggle in a certain area. So, mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't I don't run to him and say, hey, you think you you know. And I've had guys come to me and, hey, coach, do you think you can do this or should we do this? Or, right. You know, some of that nature. You got to add a bounce play for us, you know, mm. with this age group or something. Because, yeah, you try to do something a little too sophisticated. Right. You, you know, know. Our, our little brains ain't there yet, yeah, coach. My, high, my varsity guys can't run this out of bounds right. play. You got eight year olds trying to get set up. But um, I'm a parent, man. I'm a parent when my kids play sports. My son, he, he, he enjoys baseball. Uh, he's got some talent, you know, but I'm, I'm going to let him take that route. You know, I'm gonna push home. him. I'm gonna push him. If anything, I push him more the athletic side. You know, okay. go out and jump rope, man. You can go, go jump on that crack, jump yeah. over it 20 times as fast as you right. can. Try not to stay on the ground too long. I uh, like that, man. And you, you sound you sound similar to to my father when I was a kid because I think he realized that I got to a point to where I just wasn't hearing him anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, and it wasn't any disrespect to him. And I know he was saying good stuff and the right stuff, but you've been hearing this voice forever. And so whenever he let somebody else coach me mm-hmm. and deal with me. They would say the same things, pretty much reiterate the same message, yeah. but it would click and he figured it out. Like, let me go hands off. But the, the the flip side of that is after a while, I noticed him sort of being hands off 
And then I started to seek him out after that. And, you know, yeah, ask, yeah. has your son ever done? Does he ask you some questions about some sports yet? You know, he does. Some- I try to use the technology thing. We can go through, you know, video and film. And, you know, we'll talk about some stuff. It's right. swing and baseball since that was what he was in before everything, you know, mm-hmm. shut down. And, and a lot of the, the stuff he was, he would, he would, he wouldn't ask me, but right. I could go back to it. Like we was in a cage one day, uh, one of his practices, and they were going to leave. And one of the coaches was like, hey, hey, CJ, do you? play football like I really use a quarterback and he played quarterback on his little flag football team yeah you know because and I was like do you know why he asked you that and he was like no I don't know why he asked you that like this first time he ever seen me like I said because you're throwing motion I said you, you your throwing motion is fluid and I said that just remember all the time I talked about elbow away from the waist and stuff like that now you see why because mm. people notice that you have some mechanicals you know skill sets that other eight-year-olds don't have. Right. And I was like, but for me, it's safety. I don't want you to turn your arm up and develop in a horrible, you know, angle throwing motion. And next thing you know, you got shoulder and everything else problems. Real, real life issues too, man. Yeah, like, like you know, growing up, you develop, I've had little kids I've did training with and I'll make them stand behind a fence and mm. throw to me because they throw from the waist. That elbow is so tucked in and they don't have any of that, that fluid motion. And he was like, oh, okay. I was like, yeah, <laughs> he saw that arm get up and, if you can throw a baseball like that, imagine what you can do with a football. That's right. And once they start seeing success come from the advice that they've been given, mm-hmm. they're more prone to listen a little bit more, ain't they? They are. They are. <laughs> Especially when they when they have the success, like you said. When they get something positive that happens, uh, it changes their whole perspective. I go, it really does work, Dad. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, man, I should be doing this a long time ago. I yeah. told you. Now, but in reference to, to your daughter, because I'm fascinated with, with with the interest that you said that she has in, in photography and, and cooking and things of that sort. And what, what it makes me go back to is I can remember getting asked this question as a kid a lot. You probably did, too. Real simple. Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And some kids don't have an answer, which I don't think that that's bad necessarily because, yeah. you know, you got time. But then some people have it figured out early. But that's not to say that your passion might not change somewhere down the line. Yeah. But would you say your daughter figured out where her niche was early or was it or was it something that she just sort of picked up on here recently? You know what I mean? Uh, I think it just intrigue over certain exposure, you know, uh. seeing a, her brother born and, 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 you know, being around hospitals a few times and mm-hmm. new babies and medical stuff. And then also a really good friend of mine, best friend of mine from college is a, a CRNA. So, you know, him being around when she was younger and kind of seeing his profession and seeing him in scrubs and stuff, you know, yeah. you just kind of get a, uh, a, a an interest in whatever this field is. Why are these people doing this awareness? I guess that's how it kind of came about. And so, then being in school with the programs that they have with, you know, the Metro Techs and the Canadian Valley Bow Techs and things of that nature. She's seen people who have went and got their LPNs and stuff like that while still in high school and, and you oh, know, man. taking concurrent classes and getting college courses. So I think, you know, we try to emphasize that on her uh, as much as possible. She went to private school all the way up to like seventh grade. So mm-hmm. she was with this close knit kids, you know, and then at seventh grade, it got, oh, okay, now I got hundreds of kids in the school. Yeah. And so now I get, you know, and now that was a big thing with me. Now you got to look at personalities and what people are doing and, and look at the bigger picture. Don't right. just look at the social life right now. Think about the bigger picture. How are people living and what are they doing with their every single day that, that makes them happy? You know what I'm saying? That's solid. I, I think, I think it, it came about gradually and here recently with the academic stuff chunked out of in the last year being in high school. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, okay, I got to worry about GPA. You know, I got to worry about ACT scores. And yeah. she went and took the pre-ACT and made a the score to where now I can to go take college classes. So she starts psychology this summer, you know, as a busy. sophomore. So I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm just like, hey, I'm gonna push you on this because in this conversation we had, it took me to grad school really. Right. And to really have that competitive that I had in sports in the classroom. So now I'm in here with 60 students. I want to be separating myself from everybody else. And so we uh-huh. had these conversations on the way to school when I was taking to school all the time. And, you know, we, she kind of ingested. Like I said, she she's a better listener than my son. Obviously, he's eight. <laughs> right, But right. she sits back quiet and ingests things. And as much as I love to talk, I'm good at that. You know, I, I like to I shut up in certain environments because I know <clears throat> I need to be listening more than talking. And I think she's done that. And now she's at that point where I, I know I want to get into the medical field. I know I want to do these things. I need to take these classes, these Hell courses, yeah. take these tests. You know, not just have a goal, but actually have a plan. Hell yeah. That's dope to me, man, because I, I think that um, when you get to be a teenager, learning is not it's not cool no yeah, more. Yeah. And so a lot of people, because it ain't cool, it ain't fun. But now that I'm grown, 
I got on the other side of, you know, my educational experiences behind me, mm-hmm. but I love learning again. You know, yeah. part of the reason why I sit across from people, you know, like yourself and, I, and I'm asking these questions because as much as you telling me about yours. Yeah. You pouring into me. I'm like, all right, cool, man. man dang, I, I can remember that, man. That's why I didn't go so hard in the classroom. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kareem going to know her soon, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He'll know. You know, we yeah. got, got Sonny Boy coming in uh, in August. Yeah. Nef- nephew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy, man. Congratulations, y'all, man. Definitely, definitely. Same to him. But now we got to pivot. We got to talk about you, man. We got to talk about you. Oh, really? Where you from? And just give me the bio, because you're not from Oklahoma, are you? No, nah, no. Nah. Okay. Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth, Texas. All right. Man, how the hell you get up this way? <laughs> Even though it ain't a long distance. Yeah, yeah, it's only three hours, you know, but being from Texas, you told me about Oklahoma, I thought we was talking about Nebraska, or North Dakota or something. Right. I ain't know nothing. That big a difference. Yeah, huh? ain't no, you know, ain't no reason for me to go to Oklahoma. Right. Uh, no, nah, yeah, I'm originally from Fort Worth, Texas, man. My family's from Palestine. My mom's from England. Okay. Uh, my dad was in the military and they met up in England and came back. He was from East Texas, Palestine, Texas. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I was born and raised in Fort Worth. Spent a lot of time in the country in Palestine going back with him. Uh, I never been across the water, so I never seen that other side. My mother was from Ipswich, England, uh, wow. Surrey. So, you know, that's that. I got family over there, really not on her side. I got a niece that's over there, you know, and, and she sent me a birth certificate before and told me some things, but I haven't had a chance to see that side. But I played uh, college ball and, and had an opportunity to come up here and play at Redlands Community College yeah. uh, for two years, was part of a national championship team in 2002. Uh, then I left, went to school in uh, Nebraska. I mean, I'm sorry, not Nebraska, uh, Lincoln uh, in uh, Jeff City, Missouri. Was out there for a year. Uh, came back, found out I was having a daughter, had a few other opportunities to go play some ball. When you say came back, do you mean came back to Oklahoma? Came back to Oklahoma. Okay. Yeah, yeah, my, my, my wife, uh, you know, she she from here. Mm-hmm. And so came back, uh, was kind of trying to make a decision where I was going to go, what I was going to do. And then find out I was having a daughter. I was like, man, it's time to go ahead and hang the sneakers up, be a dad. But, you know, a lot of that came from through college. You know, the decision was made because like my freshman year, my dad died. And then my sophomore year, one of my teammates from high school, close, close friends since we was in sixth grade, he gets killed in a car wreck. And then my mother died on Christmas morning, my junior year, so. This is all during, this is your college experience? Yeah, yeah, this wow. freshman, sophomore, boom, junior year. So, you know, after my mom's passed on Christmas morning, I uh, I got back up to school at Lincoln in uh, Jeff City. And, you know, there was a lot going on, man. A lot going on just trying to, I guess what, what you would call grief, but yeah. at the same time trying to find some answers why certain things were happening the way they were happening. Uh, you know, I did a lot of soul searching. So, you know, yeah. Jeff City is like, it's, it's woods. You know, Missouri is beautiful, beautiful country. Right. So behind our apartments, man, it was some woods, and I would go up in the woods, man, and just sit there, and I ain't gonna front. I would just, you know, ball my eyes out, just ask, like, why? Like, what is it? Like, like this, this gotta make me. It can't break me. Right. Like, I ain't gonna let it break me. But I got to figure something out because, you know, there's... That was the third big one. Yeah, yeah. It was like the people that you do all these things to try to, you know, make proud. You know what I mean? It's kind of like the motivation. I want my mother to be proud and my father to, you know, be proud. And they were up there in age. And I always knew that that time would come. I just didn't know it was going to come like this. Right. You know, growing up, you you know, when people would be like, hey, that's your grandbaby. And my daddy's like, that was my boy. And I'm my like, boy. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. You know, those, you had me so late, you know, I didn't, right. I didn't understand all that. So it is what it is. But so, you know, you go growing up, you, you get to, I, I put like this, I had some some family members, you know, tell me like, hey boy, you you know, you gotta understand your parents ain't young. You know what I mean? So yeah. they may not see you graduate. You know, right. this is real life. You, you can't carry yourself like everybody else because mm-hmm. you need to prepare yourself. I just didn't know it was gonna happen like that. True so, that. you know, when I got back, I ain't gonna front. I, man, I didn't want to see a gym mm-hmm. after, after, after that, that, junior year in Missouri, I was like, I don't see a gym, I didn't want to spa. I was, you know, I was a different person. It was, I can't let it break me, it gotta make me. And then uh, and then my daughter, once I found out, cause I was gonna probably leave, go to Maine, there was a school in Maine that had contacted me. I got contacted, you know, to go overseas a little bit, but I didn't really want to take, I didn't want to go that route. Right. Uh, I was like, I'm good. It I'm, sounds good yeah, always. Yeah, 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 I'd already known some guys, and I was like, man, you know, guards, you go over there, you ain't gonna make what bigs are gonna make, uh-huh. for one. You'll make some money, you'll play some ball, but you ain't gonna make big money. Uh, you make good money, but you ain't gonna make big money in some other country. I was like, man, I just, you know, maybe just go on my life, man, go up to Maine, and 
I talk to the coach on the phone. I'm like, hey, y'all got some good fishing up there? You know, you right. crab legs and lobster. What? Y'all got crab legs and lobster? I ain't know about no man. Right. I like, you know. But you knew that, though. Yeah, yeah. I can go fish. Oh, man, I'm on my way. Yeah. But uh, I found out I was having my daughter. I was like, that's the blessing. What's crazy is my daughter was born on January 22nd, mm-hmm. and my dad passed on uh, January 21st of 2002. Uh. My daughter was born January 22nd, 2004. How about You know it, what man. I'm saying? I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, uh, 2000. Really? One. Uh, he, he passed January 21st, 2001. She was born January 22nd, 2004. So, you know, it was... Uh, yeah, you That's know, some irony at, there, yeah. you know? My son, my mother's birthday is July 13th. My okay. son's birthday is April 13th. So there you go. So, you know, little mm-hmm. things like that, I just like, all right. You know, yeah. it's kind of like little signs, like you made the right choice. You did what you're supposed to do. Sure. Plus, getting into coaching, man, that's that's that was the big thing. Mm-hmm. Once I got back, kind of, you know, knew I had my daughter. You know, I kind of got myself together as far as getting back out there and, and really thinking, all right, what's my next moves? And mm-hmm. uh, my father-in-law gave me an application for a Children's Justice Center, a detention officer job. At first, mm-hmm. I was like, man, there's going to be no flashlight cop. Man, yeah, like, yeah. you know, I respect, I appreciate you giving me that application, <clears throat> yeah. you know, because I was going to Voltec and, and I was trying to do the electrical trace thing because, you know, I'm still like, I need to do something. You know, right. I can't just, I, I can't just, just you can't sit around. Here. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Like, I need to find a gig and a job. I don't want to just take any job. But at the same time, I can go to school, mess with a little trade thing, just do some continual learning stuff. I love learning. I, I like electrical trades. Uh, you know, my pops being kind of a, uh, uh, how could I put it? Like Sanford and Son. That's how we were. Uh. You know what I mean? We were like, he was 100% disabled vet. Right. Out of the military, but you can't support a family on necessarily what he was getting monthly. So, you know, we scrap, man, aluminum, number one, number two, iron, nickel, copper, yeah. you know, uh, anything. So I Y'all was, was handy, yeah, boy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, ta- I'm taking baths in, in Tide because I'd be out there covered in grease, you know. Straight from, up. Yeah, from burning copper and just old head stuff. We'd be wearing <laughs> the country. You know, it's wild. You know, you know, you learn that work ethic growing up. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as I... I kind of made my decisions on what what I wanted to do with this job. I go, all right, out of respect, I'm gonna fill out the application. I turn it in, they call me in, I do the interview, uh, I get the job, I'm like, ah, oh, man, I feel like this flash, like, yeah. God, like one of these kids snap me and I'm gonna lose it. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I, as soon as one of them try to pull, they pull your card. Yeah, yeah, I'm still old, you know, I'm still, yep. I, I'm not old school, but this is how I was raised. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm gonna check one of these little kids. Yeah. And then- uh, No matter what the protocol is. Man, the fuck. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'll put my hands on you. Nah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about this. This ain't. This may not be the best thing for me. Right. How did it turn I, out? Totally opposite, man. I seen a kid mm. first intake, and I've told this is you know something I talk to my kids about all the time. Is I went in there and I one of my first intakes, a little guy come in. He'd been stealing Pokemon cards. Oh and wow. So I got to do the intake, right? So True. I got to you know I got to take him in there and get a shower and the whole nine, get his property, boom, right. get you into the program. And you know I noticed how his mom just kind of signed the paperwork, shot out. Mm, didn't stick around for nothing. Yeah, yeah, boyfriend. Then he say bye to the kid, didn't hug the kid, nothing. And I'm just kind of wow. observing that. They go in. I mean, I'm sorry. We go in, and uh, the boy didn't know how to shower. Like he didn't know the deodorant, toothpaste. Didn't really. I mean, the, the, he literally did not know how to go in and bathe himself. Like wow. I told him I got to do a body identification, this and that, any birthmarks, tattoos, whatever. Whole nine, boom, here's your shower stuff, take a shower. I'm doing his property, you know, putting his initials and everything on it. And I heard the water turn off and I'm like, nah. You done? <laughs> like, you ain't done. I had to literally, and it wasn't a bad kid. I had to no. literally talk. I was like, man, these kids ain't bad. These kids lost. And then right. throughout those six years of working as a detention officer and uh, assistant director and then eventually director, you know, I got to see that these kids aren't what we make them out to be. Like yeah. you stand on the outside and you really believe that they are just a lost generation, a lost cause. They not. They really want it. They want it. They want structure. They want somebody in their immediate life. Sure. But there has been a, a break in that environment that raises and creates that sustainability. So then mm-hmm. I've sat in DHS court hearings where I've sat back, you know, because if I have some kids that come into my facility overnight or something like that on the weekends, you know, Monday was DHS days, but they're going to have to hear these kids' court cases and figure out what's going to go on. True that. And I, there's times where the lobby would be nothing but grandparents. And mm. all these cases was just getting custody, getting custody, getting custody. I've had grandparents literally pull up at 5.30 when I'm walking out the door, leaving, crying, you know, I need help. My kid 
grandson is doing this, this, and this, and this kid, right. you know. I end up taking the kid with me and my other uh, administrator. He took the parents, got to talk about the programs that we had, and I'm taking the kid, and I show him holding cells. And I'm like, man, what is you doing, man? Like, yeah. for real. These people literally, there's no reason for them to stop here. Like, you driving them to where they are losing their mind, mm -hmm. and they ain't even got to be watching after you. Right. Like, where's your pops? Where's your moms? Right. They still out, you know, doing their thing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you would hear some. Would you ever get some answers from the kids whenever you would ask them, hey, where's your mom? Where's your dad? Yeah, because they, Man. it don't take them long to figure you out. And they know I'm I'm 100% authentic. I'm going right. to be real with you. you right. know, I'm going to be 100% real with you. But the foundation and the common denominator is I care about you. Whether I, I wish I knew. That's one question I'm going to ask my maker one day. Right. I wish I could wake up and be like, I'm going to go sell insurance today. You know, go make 400000 and, yeah. and 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 could care less about that policy. I just sold somebody that don't need it. I, I don't necessarily, mm. I don't have that, that, that makeup, I guess. Right. I, I see them youngsters and I'm like, I'm gonna be authentic with you because yeah. I care about I you. I can't go through the motions. Yeah, one day you're gonna have to be out here in the world and see the reality. And it's not always gonna be in your best interest to put yourself in situations you don't wanna be in. Right. Because that's what you're doing. You're putting yourself in situations you wanna be in. You think you wanna be in. Sure. With that action, but then the outcome, you, oh, I don't like this outcome. Well, right. You should never put yourself in that situation. But you know, you ask them and you find out that they've been exposed to some stuff and seen some stuff that you wouldn't wish upon anybody. Mm. You know? At a very young age. Oh yeah, very young age. Neglect is, is is big and and I don't try to get into, you know, all the neuroscience issues and all that. I understand all that. I believe in it. I know it has an effect yeah, on it. There's a place for it. But even with that research, you see that every child is going to react differently. Yeah. So you have to put in that time and that effort and that energy to make sure you are reaching that child on the level they need to be reached at. And right. it's just not it's just not feasible if you don't put in the resources necessary to try to do it. You have to invest in it. If mm -hmm. not, you keep seeing what we see. We mm -hmm. see suicide rates going up. Adolescents, like you said, coping skills is a big one. Yeah. Uh, obviously. They, they go from the juvenile system to the adult system. Just try to avoid that by all means, you know. Mm. It, it, all the coaching stuff, because right. I know this is basketball, you know. Oh, at the same this time, is, this is real life. This is, this is how I kind of got started in, in dealing with these kids and realizing, wow. Like, That's a similar thing, man. I, before I got my teacher certificate and became an educator, I was um I was in the in the behavior health field yeah, in the yeah. beginning. I did that too, that yeah. BHRS and exactly. case management. And yeah. it taught me a lot about relationships. Cause you know, at mm -hmm. that time I'm I'm 22, fresh out of college, and I was still under the impression that you could treat everybody the same way. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, nah, I learned quickly. I didn't even you know, somebody told me that and you hear them, but you don't hear them. But then I went through the process and I learned that every individual is different. So I had to take a different approach to this kid than I had to take to this one. And I'm like, well, if if the goal is truly me getting the best out of you, then I got to be willing to do the due diligence to figure you out. Like, okay, you, you, this is a trigger for you, so let me not turn turn up the volume like that with you. This one right here, you need a, a fire lit up under your butt, so let me, I can turn the heat up on you a little yeah. bit. And it just made me a better communicator once I started coaching and once I started teaching. And I'm like, man. And then I'm going to throw this question at you because somebody told me, hey, even a kid that you're communicating with that's on your caseload, it may not seem like they have these challenges or these issues. It may not seem like they need to be in this in this program. Mm -hmm. you just wait, and then they'll you know they'll have a moment that'll that'll show you. Okay, so this is it's real what this kid is dealing yeah, with. Yeah, there are some issues here that right. we need to address. Have you had a situation where you had a kid that was rocking steady early on for a while, and then they had sort of a breaking point to where it's like, okay, I see I see something here, and you had to redirect them, or or did you pretty much run into kids showing you their issues early? You know what I'm saying? I, I, obviously, yes, to all that. Mm -hmm. uh, some kids show those issues early, right. in my opinion, mm -hmm. so that they can get the response that they are yearning for. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I give you an example. If I'm I'm director, I'm walking out into the, the, the population or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'm walking out into the security area and the kids are you know, in class or whatever. They may see me and I, I know which one's going to raise their hand. So they got to, they got to talk to Mr. Hunt. Got to talk to Mr. Hunt. Yeah. And I know what they want. You know what uh -huh. I mean? They, 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 they want that reaction. And then there are some that never raise their hand. Mm. So I got to go get him. Right. You know what I mean? Like, hey, man, come holler at me in a pod. Mm. You good? Everything going all right? You had your court date? You know what I mean? Anything I can do for you? You know? And then you got to kind of pull that out of them because you know it's the dwelling on it. I done had kids cuss me out in the middle of getting cussed out. I just sit there, listen to it. They take it. Yeah, they and they they get wore out. I mean, it's so yeah. much emotion. It's so yeah. much 
somewhere. Like that. And I'm just like, hey, man, you done? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, hey, you keep going. It's almost like a little kid after they throw a tantrum, a little baby, and yeah, then they didn't take yeah. a nap. Yeah, just, I'm just like, hey, man, now get it off. I said, look, man, I feel bad for you, baby, because whatever is on your chest, for you to react that way, it's heavy, man. You got to get it off. Put it on me. Put it on me. Fuck ass, whore ass, bitch ass. Call right. me what you want. You know right. what I'm saying? I'm, bro, I'm not mad. I got big shoulders. Yeah. I'm not mad at you for that because obviously that's not directed towards me. Mm -hmm. I'm just happy to be here right now when it's coming off you. Right. Get it off you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Get it off you, please. I'm, I'm telling you, get it off me. I get it off you on me. I take it. I take it. Man. Transfer and uh, transfer of uh, emotions. They talk about sometimes we're like when you're dealing with clients and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. you, you know, especially when it comes to female, you may have a young lady that sees that father figure, that father role, mm -hmm. and, and vice versa. You have that counter transference where you have. I've had staff members, you know, that was more particular about a, a resident because they reminded them of a nephew. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they reminded me of a cousin or something. And so I want them to be projected as that that that, that person that I'm affiliated with mm. or the, you know what i'm saying so yeah. you, you see that with these kids too and sometimes like, hey man get it off I, I promise you man i have no ill will towards what you said and those that same young man you know later on just like, i'm sorry mr hunt I, I said no nah, man you ain't gotta be sorry man you ain't gotta be sorry right. i said you need that you need to go through that so you know when it's gonna happen and how you feel when it happened and to avoid that because you're not always gonna go off on the person that's gonna take it i don't want you going off on the wrong person that's right that next thing you know, you finding yourself with them red and blue lights around you. That's so right. You're trying to keep you out of these situations. You already on paper. Let's be right. You know what I'm saying? Let's be realistic. Uh -huh. You on paper. You can't, you you don't have any more lives to go out here, you know, your nine lives and cat or whatever. Yeah. You can't go out here and just expect to uh, have 10, 12, 11 lives. Yeah. Man. And I don't know. If you got to take it out on me, so be it. Yeah. Because you mad on something frivolous. You know True I mean? that. True that. That's another thing. I'm glad you said that word because I'm learning that. I'm becoming better at it day by day. It's not mastered yet, but, you know, Whatever kids are thinking or feeling, like that's their reality. Mm -hmm. Now we may know better because we've been where they are and we're older, and so we know that, man, what, what you tripping on really ain't shit. Yeah. But I can't tell you that and you receive it. So as, if I say that to you as a kid, you immediately gonna say, okay, I can't talk to him no more. So let me open up my mind and let's let's slice this down together. You know, and I, I've learned that, man. It's like their reality is what it is. And if I'm really real, when I was a teenager mm -hmm. or a preteen, the stuff that had me blue. With yeah. some bullshit too. Yeah, yeah, you know what it I mean? was, yeah. It was some nonsense. You know, but they, as we as we grow, we as we go, we grow. I put it to you that way. Now, would you would you say you find yourself in a situation ever where you got particularly close to a kid because he reminded you of you or somebody that was close to you, like you just broke down? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Cause you know what's funny is not not funny. I don't. My kids I always been like, oh, coach, you need to do a, a YouTube channel and all this other stuff. Cause I talk a lot of that attention stuff, man, like yeah. life issues. But I'm like, I don't. I, you know, I try to avoid that mm -hmm. uh, because I, I'd rather do a one on one. I'd rather have you feel me. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like I don't necessarily. Not saying they would never come to fruition. Just saying that that wasn't ever my approach because that's that's not what I was comfortable. With. I, I need to see you. I need to I need to see how you take this information. But anyway, to answer your question. There was a young man, he was from Anadarko, Oklahoma. Right. He was in one of our programs for five days. It was kind of a sanctions program. And uh, I was probably eight months into the job. And me and this kid, I was working three to 11. Me and this kid every night played dominoes, played cards. And I was just, I mean, he played basketball. I seen him hoop. That was what caught yeah. me. I that seen was the him hook. in the gym. That was the and hook. I seen him hoop. Right. And I was like, Hey, you got a little game. You know right. what I mean? Like, you handle the ball pretty well, move pretty well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, look, I mean, I, I spent my whole five days just chopping it up with him every day, chopping it up with him. Uh, man, go out here and take care of yourself, man. Break your, you know, break away from this foolishness and these nonsense. I understand the small town thing. You know, I'm raised in a city with millions of people. I understand how you guys get caught up in the different cultures in these small towns. I see that now. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, uh, just take care of yourself. He comes back. Maybe three weeks later with manslaughter. Mm. So he, he had gotten discharged after them five yeah, days? Yeah, yeah, you only okay. do it three to five days. It's kind of like a slap on the wrist. I don't I, I don't like scared straight. I don't necessarily like challenging kids like that, especially when they've lived a life of challenges. Right. Uh, it, it's more of like, this ain't what you want. You know what I mean? Come see exactly what it's like to lose your freedom. Mm -hmm. So he comes back about three weeks later with manslaughter. And, you know, you now nah, nah, I'm 38 now. Right. I was 20. Shh. 22, 23 at the time, maybe. Right. Light years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. 20, well, no, I'll tell you about it. I might be 24, 25. Okay. So I'm I'm still, you know, like my emotion 
had got, I looked at him, it was counter transfer. I looked at him like he was my nephews. Mm -hmm. Like all my nephews, I love them to death. Uh, they just, a couple of them was up here not too long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and so for him to come back, and, and I never forget, I went in there and I pulled his book off the shelf and I opened the book because I seen, you know, he was in the holding cell and I see the name. And I'm like, what is he doing? You know, because he in detention now. I know he ain't come back for the sanctions program. So this means you got charges pending. Right. Something going on. It's not, it's not just a visit this time. Yeah, I pulled open the book. I see that manslaughter. I'm telling you, for about four weeks, because he stayed over about over 200 days with us. Mm. I mean, I couldn't even, like, I, I couldn't even look at him. I was so hot. And he knew. Wow. He knew. He knew. I was I was. Pissed. Mm. I mean, I was hot. So you were past disappointed. Oh, yeah. Pissed. Yeah, I was pissed. Like, I would put them in the shower. You have to stand there so the cameras can see you. You know what I'm saying? And they have to get their clothes. And so we give them their clothes. So, you know, some right. clothes in exchange. But there's Makes no sense. physical contact. You know, the whole For thing. For sure. This professional. I'm doing my job. I take the clothes. I throw them in there at them. I throw them a little harder than I normally yeah. would. <laughs> and he knew it. I, man. And then finally, that's when I realized I can't allow that to come home with me. Cause I mean, I, I would go home and I wasn't the same person in my house cause I was so hot. Like, dude, you got manslaughter. Yeah. Like, do you understand that you are about to go to the adult system? Yeah, and the answer to that question is no. Yeah. You don't understand that. Yeah, and he knew it. I was like, we just sat here for five days and talked about all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And you didn't ingest any of that and go transfer it to reality, your life. Like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Beating up bums and stuff like that. So whoever you whoop that, that wasn't even a, 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 a threat. Right. And they ended up losing their life behind it. Like, oh, I was hot. I was hot. And then that's when I realized, you know, we had a conversation. Obviously, you know, it, it broke in there. And I was just like, man, I just, you know, I'm heartbroken. What didn't I say? And that's what happened at that point. For me, one, I stopped taking stuff home. You know what I mean? It, it's reality now. It ain't, gonna, it ain't gonna make or break me. I can't allow that emotion to stick with me as long as it did. Right. And from then on, the relationships are built with kids. You know, even my players and stuff like that. I'm. <laughs> You know, I don't want to say I put that barrier between it because I don't. Right. There's a reality that all I'm trying to do is help you go live your life. That's right. Go live your life. And I can't allow your life to overtake and you know, overshadow what I want to do in my life. That's right. So it, it got to be a, a healthy balance there. But that was one. And then from then on, I was like, I got to figure out, you know, I try my best to say what needs to be said. Because obviously in that conversation, whatever he needed to hear, he didn't hear. Mm. Because he went out and did the worst thing he could possibly do. Right. Like, it Which was did. almost opposite from what you would. <laughs> yeah, like everything we just talked about. I mean, right. he was receptive with it. Like, I like to do this. I like drawing. Yeah, I'm gonna do this and this. I understand your family's full of alcoholics. I understand your environment ain't the best. I understand all that, man. There's, there's, there's no way around that. Mm -hmm. If you think them people outside these walls care about that, you're fooling yourself. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. At some point, the world wants some you to do. figure it out. Yeah, some do. Mm -hmm. Don't get it twisted. But how many YMCA's is in your, your community? that are open, that are feeding kids. I have after school program, so you have somewhere to go besides over here with your drunk Amy. So uh -huh. she can send you to the store at, at 14 years old to go buy cigarettes. Right. And then you gonna get your own bottle because the store could care less about what age you are. And they're uh -huh. gonna sell you whatever you need too. Right. So your curiosities, again, that information and that curiosity with no filter, you know what I mean? There's nobody there to kind of separate it. We was talking about before, mm -hmm. you know, leads to these other behaviors. I, you, if you think people are out there really breaking their back, in a, in a mass quantity of the country, really trying to make sure that those resources are available, they will be there. Yep. But they're not. You're on your own in a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And you got to be very cautious about who you choose to ignore and who you need to, to hang on to and what they say. Man, man I, was, I was high with Buddy, man. Uh, I was high. But, I believe, I believe man, it. Ooh, just thinking about it, I was high. But that, that's when I realized that relationship. Uh, he was one that 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 I was young, I was new to it, mm -hmm. and I, I did form that kind of like, man, I want you, I want to see you go do well. Right. I want to be at your graduation type of thing. Exactly. And now you got manslaughter. Like, I'm like damn. And, and and you took that real personally as if it was your own failure. It sounds like, yeah, in, like in a way. Yeah, but like let me ask you this: folks. Whenever you went home, were you able to identify that you were different, or did you have to be told by by somebody else that you were close to, like, yo, Chuck, you, nah, you, you ain't the same? Oh, yeah, you felt yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew it. I knew it strictly because. You know, obviously everything going through so much, mm -hmm. you learn a lot about yourself. That's so, right. uh, you know, like I said, up in the mountain them days, I learned a lot about myself. Mm -hmm. So when it came to when I got home in them situations, I knew I was different. I knew I didn't I didn't want to watch the game. Wow. You know, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't want to go on a walk. I didn't want to play with the dogs. You know, even the dogs, I'm like, gotta get out, get away with me. 
You know, like, wow. like I'll go over there. Don't even get on my lap no more. You know, I, I ain't even got it in me right now. Yeah, like I know I'm different. I, I know I'm allowing this to affect me. Mm-hmm. I just gotta answer some questions. Why is it affecting me? How do I avoid from from feeling this type of way? Because mm-hmm. it's not beneficial for me and my family. I got you. Uh, <laughs> and obviously, it is what it is. Reality is, I can't go take that charge off of him. That's true. I'm gonna play devil's advocate though, because I'm I'm always I'm I'm blessed and cursed by the fact that I always try to look at stuff from both sides of it. And it's mm-hmm. like I think if you're gonna be any good at whatever it is you do particularly something in the kid business, you gonna take some of that stuff home with you for better or for worse, no matter how much you fight against it. And I I think the reason we do that, at at least I learned in me, I felt kind of guilty, not as much now, but I felt kind of guilty at one point being able to flip a switch to where I'm in this place and I'm feeling everything that you give me. But then when I walk out, I feel none of it no more. And I was like, dang, so I get to, I get to go back to the comfort of my own crib and worry about just me and my own stuff and you, there's no off switch for you. You're in it, and the, the closest you get to off is if we turn y'all loose outside to go run around for some recess or something. Yeah. But you in it all day, and I'm able to get out of it. And so I would like I would harbor some of them feelings until something like you had. I'm like, yo, I gotta shake this, man. I'm too. I'm just heavy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I think I figured out how to do it. I, I'm still swinging. Yeah, still yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's. There's a lot of positive, positives, especially with what we do now, right? And, and the success and. And the things that we've been able to accomplish and, and yourself and I in and, and our career field now, field now right. um, what we were doing before, mm-hmm. that's intense. You know, those sure. psychologists, I understand a lot of these people, you know, uh, they can't turn it on and off. Right. You know, not, not that, like you said, I still bring it home. I just don't bring it home like I did before. That's right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not in that that world anymore so now it's, we lost the game you know what I mean there now, you go a lot lighter oh why didn't yeah. we call that time out you know that's what right I mean? and that's a lot more manageable yeah yeah so, yeah, so yeah. When, when did you pivot back into when did you decide yo I need to I want to get into coaching you pivoted from you know from the mental health and the behavioral health field and now you picked up the whistle and you back and you instructing you, you coaching ball and you you're an educator you know what, I'm saying? what, what brought you back uh well I left, you know, the, the, how can I put it? I was at the detention center. There was some changes in the administration. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was assistant director. There was a director guy. We was cool. We got along. We just had different philosophies. Mm-hmm. And, and and I was at that point kind of tired of seeing them young people coming in out the doors. I, I had done it so long. We averaged, you know, 12, 1,400 kids a year, residents and young people a year. Mm-hmm. And, and I've done groups. I mean, I've probably done a thousand groups with mm-hmm. upwards to, you know, Five, ten, fifteen thousand young people mm. from different facets. So I put a lot of time and energy into that. Didn't really necessarily want to spend, you know, any more time with the young people behind the wall. Let me try to get to them before they get to that phase. Mm. And I was actually I was in grad school, and a good friend of mine, um, his little brother, who's a good friend too, was kind of like, man, I need to get these grad school hours and this and that and do some things. He was like, hey, you should go holler at the head coach. And so I went and talked to him. And mm-hmm. um, at the high school in town, and and, and this was where it was El Reno. El Reno, okay, yeah, cool. yeah, right. And that's Hayden. where I know you from. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. That's our days in the in the conference. So you know, he was like, yeah, you know, you need to get these hours, man, for sure. You know, come on and help out. And I kind of, hey, I, mean, I was on that championship team, played here in town at the, at the community college, played a little D two ball. Uh, like I, I'm good around the game, I'm good with kids too. Like you, you see, I'm not gonna be a, a you know. A, uh, a bad thing. I don't want right. to be a distraction. Right. You're gonna be an asset. Yeah, like I'm come on and do my thing. So I, I, I got on and just was helping. You know, I'd go on and help with practice and help with uh, games and stuff. And then, and then I finished grad school. It was like, well, <laughs> get in this teaching and coaching. A position came open and I started, you know, coaching and teaching in Reno. Uh, that was 2009. Yeah. And so, what were you teaching? What was I teaching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, oh, what subject did you get to? Oh, history? Yeah, history yeah, guy? yeah. Yeah, when I, did the, when I did take all the tests, I went and took, the, you know, the obviously the OGAT, the general oh, ed man. test, and then I went and took. A lot you know, of money, brother. Oh, man, I can't tell you how much money I was spending. Oh, I was, I was donating spent, money to the state. Yeah, dog. oh, man. Yeah, I, I made sure I passed them tests, you know what I'm saying, pretty much the first time. I got really? that. The Lucky you. Out the way. Damn it. Went no. back to <laughs> the history, you know. God, I like, I like history particular errors of history. I ain't gonna say I'm a I'm, I'm just a genius from all of it. No, particular areas I'm more intrigued with. I got you. But uh, you know, I got in teaching and coaching position came open and I was like, yeah, bet, let me do it. And uh started coaching freshmen, helping out with varsity. Mm. And you know, before long, you know, I'm still pretty young to the point where I was like, I need to find my niche as far as what on the staff. Uh-huh. And uh I was like, well I'm thinking of how we grew up. You know what I mean? We played ball all the time and the culture. I was like, man, it was just, I'll open a gym, you know what I mean? Easy, yeah. easy. Hey, I got coach, number time. Coach, you rebound for me? Of course I'll rebound for you. You know, hey, 
Because you got any ball handling drills? Or you got any, yeah, I got all that. Like, what you need? Like, all mm-hmm. oh, this is cool, though. There's a whole other facet to the game that I want to embrace. So, you know, being on that national championship team opened my eyes up. And a phenomenal coach and Coach Eck, you know, who's at Hutchinson Community College now, like, his, his defensive mind and things he showed us, you know, from playing in it, I took some of that and was like, all right, let's move that over here. And there's some other things that, you know, we use from other coaches. Right. I, you know, I played for three different coaches and three different systems, philosophies. Yeah, you can go back to high school, you know, you just take some of those things. And then, and then at the time, I'm still balling, you know what I mean? Yeah, you, like, know, you still got juice. Yeah, I'm still, oh, I'm still going. So mm. let's play cut, though. You know, I'm going to yeah. win. It's easy. Easy. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> Roll, rolling up all the young fellas. Yeah. Like, now they got to listen to you. Yeah, I'm going to body y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's a mm. bucket every time. So, you know, you get the balling, and, and then we – we were able to start having success. And mm-hmm. So it was like, oh, made the state tournament. I made the state tournament again, make the state tournament again. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, okay. Now this and, is an expectation every year now. Yeah, yeah. And, and then at the same time, you know, me, I'm like, well, I'm working with the freshmen and, you know, varsity, and JV, and I'm low-key over here chit-chatting with the, uh, you know, middle schoolers whenever I got a chance. And then I'm opening the gym on Saturdays. I'm on the gym on Sundays. You know, holidays and things like that. We in yeah. the gym. See? And, and I'm able, obviously, dealing with kids as long as you had, you get to try to build that that perspective, that expectation, that mm-hmm. culture, that this is what we do. We don't care about what's on their chest. We care about what we do. And if we can do uh, these things to the best of our abilities, we know where it's going to put us, For regardless sure. of anything else. And so, you know, guys to start buying into it. When it's fun, you know, it's – Losing can be uh, contagious, but but I think winning can too. Winning can too. Winning can too. And that, that's then, one of the things right there. When, when, how, did it take long for for those kids to, to seek you out, or, or did, did you have to show up and put some of them to work? Because I know it's a different feeling whenever they say, hey, coach, will you, mm-hmm. as opposed to you saying, come on, let's do. You know what I mean? How did it work? That's a, that's a great question because I think a lot of people deal with that today. Some of these kids, they want it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they don't know how bad, you know what I mean? Cool. I, let me rephrase that. They want it, but they don't know if they want it bad enough to do what it really takes. That's right. When and it gets uncomfortable, yeah, it's like. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> man, that's all I've done this last decade is try to make situations of adversity and situations that we know they're going to face in March. Mm-hmm. We know they're going to face in, in the regionals and districts and areas and in tournaments and, you know, even scrimmages. Everybody is very meticulous. The, mm. the coaches that I know, the coaches I've seen you sit down with, right? Uh, the programs I've seen you, you know, sit down with, is very, in my opinion, meticulous about making sure that these things are consistent because we know it's about the duration of the season where we want to be here. Right. So when it comes to the working aspect, because you know it's a lot of young men. Now I've been on the phone. You know, we chit chat about things that you can do at home, or just have a ball in your hands. You know, getting ready for next year, hopefully, and everything. You know. It's still world. on course, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you know, the world is different course. right now. You know, I think uh, there's some that I reach out to, especially if it's a huge deficiency. I'll be a hundred. If it's if your shot just looks, they know now, man, you got to be out there shoot me. You know what I mean? Now, every team I've ever been a part of, we're going to have shooters. We're going to be able to shoot the ball. Straight up. Uh, I'm going to make sure of that. That's the one area you're going to learn how to shoot. The so, game has evolved to where that shooting shooting ability used to be a luxury. Oh, now yeah. it's a necessity. You, you have gotta, to have it. Yeah, you got to have it. You yeah. got to be a threat. If you're not a threat on the court, ain't no reason for you to be out there. No. I mean, not necessarily an all-time. If you're 6'8", 280 pounds. We can do a lot with that. Yeah, you, you, man, you ain't even got to have hands, bro. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Just, you can run around this mug, just elbow and shoulder people. Right. Like, you know, you, you got to be able to shoot the ball, or you got to be able to threat, especially with what we were working with mm-hmm. out west, with having, you know, spreading people out. We don't have six eights. We don't have six nines. You know? mm-hmm. We don't have the size of the post president. So we need to be able to spread you out and get those gaps and those seams in order yeah. to put you, you know, put us in a position to be effective. But yes, I, I seek out young people as far as, you know, being in the gym. When I see certain guys doing certain things, you might know, uh, you know, and played this year, yes, you sir. know, with the guy, you know, his shot last year, seeking him out. Hey, hey man, that's flat, man. You're going to have to get under the ball, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and, and what happened was he was actually playing, I believe it was John. No, it wasn't John Martin, Northwest class of last year. He went baseline and pulled up, and the guy covered pretty quick, and he had to get way under. And, uh-huh. I mean, floated it. Bloop, and then at the bottom. And wow. I looked at 
I told you, I told you, it's, now, you now you see that ball's got to go up, man. It's flat. And, that, and you know, now, obviously, you know, he's shot the ball extremely well this year. Um, but that, that was me seeking him out. There are other kids, you know, a lot of time they, they see you doing something or they just see you in the gym. Mm -hmm. Hey, coach, can we get some drills, you know, can we get some footwork stuff? Or, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that. You know, it, it's I ain't going to say it's hard because I've seen this. Some guys – don't want to mess with the kid that he knows isn't going to be no prodigy, or, you know what I mean? Mm. He ain't going to play at the next level. Right. And, I, and, I, and I think that's a bad thing. I, it really hurts my heart uh, when I have to interact with certain kids and I realize that they've been kind of... Neglected or, or, or overlooked? <sighs> yeah, it's as far as... they kind of been misled sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to try to help you get better at those deficient areas, but I also want to help you get um, skilled in areas that can get you on the court. Ultimately, you want to get on the court, right? That's, that's right. what you want to do. You want to play. Uh, so let's do the things that's going to help you get on the court. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Let, guys, after practice, there's a couple I used to go off. Hey, I mean, y'all quit dunking. You know what I mean? <laughs> quit dunking, man. We got some of them too. They want to throw it up, <laughs> run after it, time it. Because <sighs> y'all are doing this, but at the same time, you come and say, hey, coach, how can I get on the court? And, and so I give you this advice and all these things. Because yeah. eventually, I'm big on, hey, I stand back, let you do it. Well, yeah. It's not about what you do when people are watching. It's about what you do when no one's watching. Yeah. And you gave them the recipe, so now they can't they can't say that they don't know. Yeah, and all that the skill set stuff though. That's to me, it's it's uh it's it's crucial. It's important. But it's that mindset. Yeah, you know, it's that mindset. If we can help develop that mindset, you come to practice every day. You're on time. You're yeah. ready. You stretching. You go get taped or do whatever you got to do. And it's it's almost like that's one thing I would say our, our program that we had out west for a little bit of time was, you know, it, it was, there wasn't no gaps in that mindset. And they got to work every day, it was work. And we're gonna have fun, we're gonna enjoy it, but we're gonna work, we're gonna work. And then you know that payoff is when them lights come on Tuesdays and Friday nights, and they get bright, baby, let's go. And then you know the big payoff is when it's hardware on the line and you try to get that state tournament and yeah. police escorts and the t-shirts right, and yeah. the memories. Yeah, and, and you're one of, the, you one of the last eight remaining teams out of 32. Yeah, you know? and, and, and and you know, never gets old. It never gets old, and and so all the skills. I mean, it all goes hand in hand. Uh, you gotta, the kids gotta want it. They don't mm -hmm. want it, and they ain't fit to. They ain't, it matters you not. Ain't, you ain't fit to make it. You know what I mean? No. You ain't fit to make them want it. True that. Uh, now they may want success. They may want you know be part of a winning program. They may not want to do the things that's gonna help them. You know, get on the court. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, they, you want to be a part of it. Cool. Part of it. <laughs> cool, man. Hey, it's all about the eating out the games sure. and the hotel stays. I used to tell them all the time I had about three or four kids that they ain't playing no college ball. You know, yeah. they know it, but they love being around. Right. Man, that hotel, you know, wake up and or you across the street. Yeah. And a lot of times breakfast. Those oh. guys those guys a lot of times are some of the most some oh, of the, yeah. the, the biggest entertainers that you got in the program. Oh, man. And they, things just aren't the same when they're not there. Oh, yeah. You watch them on film. You know, we watch the bench on film. You see guys over there just having a blast. And, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not going to say it's not happening as much. Right. I don't really try to compare it to the next level because if you're going to go play college ball, you want to play. Yeah, you yeah. Know what and, I mean? and listen, you're, an, you're a financial investment at that point. Yeah, so it's a job. You better perform what you've done. Oh, yeah, it's a job. You know, you see, you see, you know, the passion may be a little bit more there mm -hmm. to get high school kids, especially ones knowing, you know, everything now is me, me, me. That's right. You know, I, I want it on me to just be, say, I want to be part of a program. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to work hard and I'm not going to be a distraction in practice. I'm going to be a part of the program. Uh, I want to be part of these memories being made. You right. Know, those, those are crucial. You get those guys around you, and you, you're going to have great success. I mean, and they're pivotal. They're important. And I work with them, too. Yeah. Young man, uh, some years ago, man, every day after practice, coach, coach, rebound, rebound. Ah, I, don't rebound. I know he ain't touching the flow. You know right, what I mean? Unless, I unless, unless somebody in the zone. That's it. Right. Because he, he can't handle the ball busting. like that. Yeah. But if somebody in the zone, hey, you might be able to slide in that corner. <laughs> you know what I mean? Every day after practice. Every day, we'd always work, 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 work. He shoot, shoot, shoot. Eventually, I got to where I was like, you got to make 25. You know, I'm going to push you a little bit. It's going to yeah. cause me to be here longer because making 25 and shooting 25 is different. A lot different. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot different, different, especially when you got to move and other uh -huh. things that Game I require him to do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to be what you're going to pull under them lights get to a, a regional game, we play a team, they switch it up on us from what we thought we were going to do. Uh, it was actually chicken shape. And they went zone on us, 
chunked him in the game, and I swear to you, man, this cat hit five trays in the oh, first wow. half. I don't think he hit nothing in the second half because right. he blew it open. You yeah. got to come out that zone yeah, now. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. they probably keyed on him, too. Like, yeah, uh, we got to. <laughs> oh, they ain't never seen the kid. They ain't right. ready to play. And I told him, I said, hey, hey, give him a shot. You know what I mean? I think he might be all right. Because, I mean, even though – they stall and try to slow us down a little bit. You know, it was still a good game and everything. Sure. Uh, 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 it started off that way. And right. He got in and that kind of spread it over. It loosened up a little bit. I was bit. like, man, I told you, man, all them shots, man. Like the <laughs> practice paid off when it mattered. I know that felt good to him, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a good kid. Good kid. Beautiful. He's a good man now. He's doing some good stuff. See? That's why we do it. Yeah, but yeah. Now we got to talk about the COVID. Coronavirus, man. That's what's really popping out here. And I hate to say popping like it's just... Like, it's fun. It's not. But I think, you know, we all out here adjusting to a new normal. Um, I remember. It is. I remember when it first, when I first got wind of, like, major shutdowns. It was the week of the state tournament. It was <laughs> on that very day, that Thursday. We, you know, we at the gym, you know, over in Millwood, pregame shooting, getting things together. What time did y'all play? We were supposed to play at 2. At 2 p.m. at uh, Oklahoma City University. Oh, y'all OCS. Yeah, uh, against uh, Oklahoma Christian School. It, it, I, I believe I'm saying oh, that. Yes. Yeah, I believe okay. I'm saying that right. Now, that was going to be a hell of a contest because we, we had beaten them in, in the matchup we had during the regular season. And, you know, it's hard to beat a good team multiple times in the oh, same yeah, season. Yeah. But, you know, you just want to. You, you wanted to go lock horns so we could, you know, we put in all this work to get to this point. We want to finish it up. But anyway, I can go down a rabbit hole. Oh, no. Nah, but anyway. Believe me, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> yeah. Because y'all, like, ooh. Well, what were you doing whenever you got the word that, yo, world is pretty much shut down? Well, were you in class teaching or you doing one of your various duties? What, what were you on? I was sitting in the, the bus barn parking lot where the buses was, getting ready to get the bus to go get the guys, go watch the girls play at two, mm. and then go play our game at seven. We're going to eat. I mean, that was pretty much the itinerary for the day. Yeah. and uh, Our schedules were reversed. The boys, we were going to play at two and our girls played at seven, so it's a similar uh, thing. Yeah. See? We, we played, uh, girls played, I think, at SNU and we were playing at Deer Creek. Yeah. And uh, I went to go get the bus and and, you know, obviously, me and some other ADs was interacting on some some conversations and there was some things, you know, coming forward. Mm -hmm. Well, I actually heard on the radio about UConn, kind of. I think UConn might have been, like, shutting their site or said, hey, we're not going to do our, yeah, our site, something yep. of that nature. They're one of the first ones that I got that I got the word of that yeah. were saying, I don't care what y'all Because I think they had 3A. Oh, no, I'm sorry. They had 2A or something like that. Mm. They had some. They had a smaller class, but I remember they said something like they wasn't doing it. And I remember I parked my truck and sat back and was like, man, let me hold off before I do the bus. Like, and then the text thread start coming, and the next thing you know, you hear it. And, and yeah. so I think OSSA um, postponed it. Eventually, obviously, canceled it, postponed it at like maybe like 1230 that day. Mm -hmm. And I think it was about 11-something when I first – you know, being pulled in there to go get the, the bus. Because I was going to pick up the bus, go get the guys. Yeah, same guys, old. Yeah, guys was already out of class. They was ready. We were going to go watch the girls, support the girls, right. and then go eat. And Full go. day of plan. Man, it's state tournament. First time in 40 years. They was excciting. We had a great – man, and when I tell you, oh, coach, when I say we had one of the most special practices I'd ever been a part of the day before, I was like – Let's go. Because I had been on them. Like, yeah. the game plan, I had it written on the board. We'd already talked about, you know, me and obviously Coach Cudjo, you know, mm -hmm. me and head coach, we talked a few things. And right. I broke down film. And, you know, I was like. Everybody was ready. You yeah, know we're about I mean? to go play, uh, you know, pretty much, even though they may have came in through the loser's way, the number one team in our class, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, one of the top teams in the state, right. you know, in Kingfisher. Mm -hmm. And our guys were looking forward to that competition because we know they're going to bring it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and it was going to be a good game, you know, or at least try to make it a good game. You know, we was like, hey, we got to be hungry, but we had a great practice, man. You know, our schools had combined from last year with, mm -hmm. with class and SAS combining with Northeast. And I was at Northeast last year. That's yep. my first year, you know, being outside out west at Reno. And so I was part of that and was able to be retained. And I wanted to be a part of that to try to say, hey, like, how can we come together and make this a unified group? Considering we just played each other last year, yeah, right? You know, things of that nature, and that matters. And, mm. and and in the next thing you know, we had this this uh this amazing practice, man, and get ready to go to state tournament. And now we got to walk around with masks and germex, and and I try to yeah. make sure that hey, man, y'all take this serious. Like, obviously, people are getting yeah. sick, so. right? And that was gonna be my next question because I'll be honest, when I when it first when everything first happened, I thought that we were overreacting. And I, and I think mm -hmm. if most people are honest, they probably felt at least a little of that early on because this is something unlike anything that we've ever dealt with. And But then I'm seeing the, the, the big corporations. One of them will shut operations down and then the other one's kind of looking like, 
Oh well, dang. Well, I guess I'll shut mine down too. And I thought it was trendy. You know, sort mm-hmm. of like sort of like if a player slips in the draft. You know, I'm like, wait, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, you yeah. didn't take him, and I know he's cold. Uh-huh. So you must see something I don't see. So I ain't gonna take him either. I started yeah, seeing something yeah. like that. I'm like, man, how bad is it for like real? A chain now, reaction. Yes, that that's a better term, chain yeah. reaction. But now, obviously, I see that it's legit. Like, how, how did you feel about it? Did you, were you a believer early on? You know, I <laughs> I'm always skeptical yeah. as far as uh, what's transpiring and where I get the information from. So mm-hmm. obviously my main concerns eventually, cause I'm, I live kind of rural, I live out in the country. So, mm-hmm. you know, I know those, those high density populated areas was mm-hmm. going, you know, uh, I was watching that, you know uh-huh. what I'm saying? To see how that, that transpired. I was like, man, I'm thinking about this, you know, state tournament, our athletic programs mm-hmm. and the school and class. And I'm thinking, all right, what's the next moves? And, and trying to interact with our admin and, and, and see what's going on. When it comes to the virus itself, I mean, I something's going on. Now, yeah. I've tried to do my due diligence and find as much information as possible because we both know, man, you people, people out there talking, all, I mean, they got all kind of, you know, information that I don't know what's real or fake. And at True. this point in today's society, you don't know where you can get real or fake from. So yep. the best thing to do, in my opinion, is try to get as much information as you possibly can. And then decipher through it for yourself. Exactly. And then come to a, a conclusion on what exactly is transpiring. In my opinion, something something's taking place as far as something getting out of hand. Mm-hmm. And it seems like, because obviously we know that this thing has been around and there was some sort of virus that was detected, you know, all the way back in, what was it, like December or something like that? Mm-hmm. Um, I heard January, but December may be more yeah, accurate. Yeah, getting, getting into January. So something's already... It, Something's transpired. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't have any control over, you know, how, they, how the CDC and all them other people run, the, you know, what they do. All I can do is try to, you know, keep my mind safe, me and mine safe, uh, make sure that the people that, that are hurting, so to speak, uh, I don't necessarily mean like physically, but, mm-hmm. you know, people that don't have access to certain things and resources at this point in time, you know, maybe reach out to some of them, make sure that they know they got a lifeline if they need to holler about anything. Uh, that was kind of my approach. Was I, I don't? What do I have control over? Cause I'm always on the players about that. Man. Sure. I, you know, referee. You know, you foul. Hey, yeah, foul. Yeah. Hey, man, you put energy in stuff you can't control. Yeah. Just put energy in things you can control. Right. You can control how you respond on the next play or whatever. So, I can't control what they close and what they open. Uh, what I can control is how I'm go about my day mm-hmm. and how I can go about my own safety and my family's safety. And then, like we talked about earlier. You know, we spend a lot of time outside of our families, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, you know, after 16 hour days and 18 hour days, and, you know, waking up at five and not maybe going to bed till one, you know, from the mm-hmm. whole day. I was like, man, this may be a blessing. Just slow down, think about my own health and see my family, my kids. Right. You know, relax, enjoy my home for a little bit. Yeah. And I actually, actually go to sleep without having to set no alarm. Just yeah. wake up whenever you wake up. Yeah, I understand. With nothing that, to do. You know, I was, you know, lucky that career path we in, it didn't hurt us too much financially. You know, you take a hit, but, uh, you know, there was a lot of people out there. I knew, you know, some of my neighbors, a lot of my neighbors in the oil field. Mm-hmm. And I know they, you know, they took a huge hit. A lot of them lost their jobs and things of that nature. So, you know, I, I know I don't necessarily have it bad. You know what I'm saying? When it comes right. to the virus stuff, man, hey, look, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. Right. Uh, I, it would be nice to have faith in, in the government to say, hey, I know you guys are, are giving us the clear uh, indication and, mm-hmm. and, and uh, information that we need. Give the public what it is they need. The first thing that caught me, man, was everything turned into Fed, you know, oh, the Federal Reserve needs to dump into the market. We worried about the market. Right? And I'm thinking, like, man, we ain't even talking about people. Like, first thing we're trying to save is the market. Wow. Like, that's got to shock me. Like, wow. I mean, I understand that's people's livelihood and pensions and all that. I get that. But wouldn't we, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we can test yeah. and make that really accessible to as many people as possible. Yeah. We want to make sure that the, the safety states, of people. Yeah, the, the say yeah, the safety. I mean, you you want to make sure the states have whatever it is they need to have. The states have more of a. I mean, it seemed like here recently it just this is passing on down. Well, it should have been taken care of a while back. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, as far as passing that stuff down, what does the, the the local government needs to do and the state governments need to do? Uh, you know, I've tried to look at the structure of some of that stuff and the decision making. And I watch these interviews and pressings, and you hear all these people talking, and you know. Maybe it's just how I am. I, I hear it, and then I got to question it. 
my daddy taught me. You know what I mean? You yeah. question everything. So right. I hear it and I question it. How much of this is uh, is factual? How much of this is exaggerated? You know, uh, the death tolls. And you heard people go, oh, it's only like zero point, 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 yeah, point. Man. I don't know who did the math on that. Right. You know what I mean? Because it's really, I, I don't know how you're gathering all your information. To right. Even put, it could be just ballpark. Yeah, like, I, I don't. I don't see it. You're not exposing any of that, those methods. Right. So I just got to take your word for it. I'm still going to question that. For sure. Uh, and since I don't have any control over that, I'm not going to put a ton of energy into that. I'm just going to say, hey, how can I take care of me and mine? Sure. Uh, From the take care standpoint, have you been taking serious precautions or has, or has it pretty much been business as usual in terms of the way y'all live? Well, you know, you don't go out as much, mm -hmm. uh, try to reduce as much uh, exposure, I guess you could say. Because mm -hmm. once they started popping up in the town we live in, once, you know, some cases started popping up, uh, obviously, you know, it makes you a little bit more like, all right. Now this is just close to home. Here. Yeah, it's made its way out here to, you know, small towns. So, right. uh, you know, let's let's be more cautious about the things we do. But, you know, it's just keeping the Germex and the Lysol and things of that nature. You know, you're washing your clothes when you, when you get in. I don't do it all the time, obviously. But if we go out, I got to go to Lowe's and, you know, get certain things. I may come back and, you know, throw my clothes in the washer and take a shower. Immediately. You know, I don't. I don't want to say that's extreme. You know what I mean? Right. I think it's real. I, I ain't walking around in bubble wrap. You know what I'm I, saying? I, I like, hear that. I ain't leech in my back pocket. Sure, uh, sure. You know what I'm saying? I just you drive yourself nuts. Yeah, just being a little bit more. You know, keeping some Germex in the cars, things like that, and, and, and make sure you're a little bit more consistent with it. That's right. Like, that's the key. Yeah, yeah. I got some out there now. <laughs> Germex. You know what I mean? Go get my coffee this morning. All right, get back in the car, Germix. That's May right. wipe down my cup a little bit. That's right, that's right. <laughs> wipe the lid. All, All right, of that. Just in case. Things that we never really paid particular attention to uh, before now, we're starting to. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it may, it's eye-opening. That's know, right. I think the biggest thing for me was uh, I, what I'm taking from this is how dependent certain people are in certain sectors um, on things that they can't, how can I put it? Excess without some some other entity giving them access to it. That makes mm, sense. It does. It uh, does. I, you know, there were some friends of ours that we went out and visit. And they you know live on hundreds of acres, and and you see, you could sustain life. You know what I mean? Y'all mm -hmm. look good. You know what I mean? Like you can talk about pandemic. They scratching their head. Like what y'all talking about? You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, Hey, we got our beef out here. We got chickens out here. We got, I got everything right. I pretty much need. Don't need a store. Yeah, I don't necessarily need to run to these entities to get everything I need. And I think that that some conversations I've had with some friends of mine, you know, that they like, man, I got like a quarantine ideology change. You know, I'm thinking of other things now that maybe I do need access to these things, or maybe I should be a little bit more skilled in this area and know right. what's going on. I don't want to be dependent. I think I think what happened from my perspective is people were exposed about how dependent they are. And, mm. I, and I use the word entities and, you know, you know what I'm kind of I know, I know what you mean. You know what I, I mean? know what you mean. Because some of them are good, some of them are bad. And that's mm -hmm. just how life is. Some some of them are doing the right thing. And I think, obviously, what was it, the Lakers the other day got a small business loan. Yeah, yeah see what <laughs> I mean? It, now, I don't know how, see, again, I don't know how factual that is. <laughs> yeah, because when I first heard it, I laughed like, get get out of here. Man, you know what I mean? like, come on, man. Like, y'all are really hurting. Like Really hurting. Y'all yeah, really hurting like that? Like It's hard to believe. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I raised my eyebrows immediately like, yeah, I, yeah. Lakers ain't asking no loan, man. man that's, that's, but that's, I don't know nothing. Yeah, there's some people that could have, you know, some businesses I know that, that could have probably utilized some of that the first go round, didn't have to wait for another stimulus package or whatever the case. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's that's becoming almost like, I, I don't know what to say about all that. They just chunk, they just chunk out a trillion here and a trillion there. And I'm like, man, what's funny is it's going to all the people who got the same sort of benefits. Ah, let me shit. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going political. You about to make that left? About to Man, make that left turn? Yeah, yeah. I, I was about to, the rabbit hole you was talking about. Yeah. Ooh, that's a you big go one down for me. Minute. That's a big one for me. Man. I hear that's a big but, one for me. Well, we'll go back to the comfort zone, man. We got to let's get back to your profession because you're wearing a lot of hats now. You're an athletic director, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And um, are, are you are you your assistant? Your assistant basketball coach, assistant boys, right? Basketball, assistant baseball, mm -hmm. and I was assistant softball. You know, well, being was, being AD was one of them things where I was like, I it, it may be a little too much to try to jump on and take on the head coach position, free me up a little bit. But at right. the same time, I, I, I've always coached these sports. I like to be involved in them. Okay. Um, and I figured if I got to be there, you know, anyway, in some of these situations, uh, I like to be around it. Got schools combining, programs combining, new kids, new coaches. I'm yeah. not, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit of a buffer between two, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some new coaches in some some positions that, uh, that. may need some assistance. Yeah. And, how, do you, know, how do you, how do you, how do you do that and, and be mindful at the same time of not 
you know, overshadowing and being too heavy. Because, you know, everybody's reaction is different when the boss is around. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, I mean? you can be as cool as you are because yeah. you're a cool dude. But at, the end of the day, at the end of the day, if we're working together, you know what I mean? And like, let's say we hit a little slide and I'm the head coach, you on my staff. I'm wondering, like, am I looking at coach over there or if I'm looking at the executive <laughs> that's like, might have to pull the plug oh, on yeah, coach. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, we're going to have a conversation. You know what I mean? Have you uh, run into any of that type of friction or has it been pretty, pretty smooth sailing? Yeah, I, I would say my experience being a director and, and have, you know, 60 plus people on the staff, mm. uh, people, you know, twice my age at, at particular times, what is our end goal? Uh, in that field, you know, it's safety every day and, you know, no incident reports, blah, blah, blah. Sure. You know, in our field, it's kids safe. Mm -hmm. uh, we compete. Uh, are we getting better? You know, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So if that's our common goal, and you don't have to necessarily see me in that light. Right. I, I was beneficial, like with our softball coach. I think you know she she was very uh, open, like, hey, coach, like, like, thanks. You know what I mean? Like, certain things I can do or show or help uh, different eyes, a different set of eyes for something that may be a little bit newer. You know, uh, with, with Coach Cudjo, you know, it's obviously you know he's, he's a retired legend. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. he, uh, uh, he's known. I've been I, doing this for quite some oh, time. Man, you know, he's had great success, some state champions in, in, in that. So it was. Uh, you know, let me still use a little of my youth and some of the things that I've seen and, and have a relationship with some of these guys that's come back mm -hmm. and try to bridge that, you know. Uh, and, and, he, and he was more like kind of let me take the reins on some things. And so that, that type of freedom, you know, you didn't have to worry about me looking over as the boss, so to speak. Sure. Uh, and then obviously our spring got shut down, but, you know, me and the baseball coach, we'd already had a chance to coach two games. And, and you know, very similar. I think we were getting ready to know each other a little bit. Uh, you know, they know me. I'm not going to bite my tongue when it comes to the competitive side and, and, and the sports side, what we're doing, yeah. our, our approach, you know. But I, I certainly want them to be comfortable and know, hey, you, you, you know, you're the head coach. You, know, you make mm -hmm. the final call. You make the – you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm here to support. That's right. Uh, provide and help. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, you, you are the head coach. I want you to be the head coach. Yeah. I don't want to overstep your, your boundary, so to speak. I, I love that statement when you say not biting your tongue because I think a lot of us – a lot of people, grown and young, don't really, they're not comfortable with the idea that we may have to have an uncomfortable conversation. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not even talking about something deep, but it's like a difference of opinion. And we in the game, we both, we both want to win. So yeah. that's not in question. Yeah, yeah. Like your way of going about it may be different from the way I'm going about it. Mm -hmm. So we may have a little back and forth about it. But you know what I mean? It's like, but that's okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? We, we grown. And it's yeah. like, I, I always use this analogy with my players and with parents when I have a parents meeting. I say, hey, listen. There's no way you're going to get all of us, a room full of people, to agree on everything. Mm -hmm. it, it may be even a stretch to say that we would agree, we would all agree on anything. Uh, you know, case in point, if I ask, hey, where y'all want to eat after this? We ain't never going to get on the same page. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, just just trust the fact that I ain't going to knowingly do nothing foul by your kids. Oh, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And so, you know, whenever we got that established on, on a staff of, even if it's just a basketball staff of five coaches or the whole athletic staff. And we know that, hey, man, we may disagree, but we got the same goal in mind. We're going to be all right. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? But have, have you had to – have you have you been in a situation where you had to deal with some parents going over a coach's head to deal with you coming and complaining about something? And if so, how would you handle it, man? I mean, it's uh, – obviously, you know, those things are going to come. That's those right. Those situations come. You, you expect them. You right. know they're going to they're gonna surface. They're going <laughs> to manifest themselves. Um, you certainly want to back your coaches. Sure. You know, even at times. That's where, what I was hoping you would say. Yeah, yeah. You got to, you got to, you got to, you got to back your coaches. Let them know. You know, you're trying to support their program mm -hmm. as long as, like, first thing, the kids safe. You that's know, right. Are we going out there every day doing what's best right for these young people? That's right. Uh, if we're doing that, then, then we're all, we're off to a good start. Mm -hmm. You know. Now, obviously, you want to compete, and be successful. And you, you want programs to hurt, have certain features that you know are going to help you be successful. Sure. Your off season and things like that, um, but when it deals, you know, when the parents come into play, that's where you have to kind of be that buffer. You gotta gotta support your coaches, and you gotta be that buffer between that parent and that coach. But at the same time, that's their baby. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's yeah. that's your baby. That's I right. know you want what's best for your baby. I'm mm -hmm. gonna tell you uh, my opinion in the situation the best of my ability. I don't, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you. I'm not gonna tell you one thing and then have to turn around and tell uh, you know. And, and, 
I'm not gonna bash the coach to the, right. to the parent and then turn around and, and make the, the coach feel like you know I, I really supported them because that parent's gonna probably go back and say something or that parent's oh, yeah. gonna treat that coach differently. You That's know, right. I think when the, when a parent sees, look, both of these people have my child's interest at heart, best interest at heart, and they're they're, they're going above and beyond. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm taking kids home. You know, I've been all over the north side now because now a lot of my youngsters live on the north side. That's I right. know the north side better than half the dudes that probably grew up over here. That's I've right. Been, I've been dipping up and down these streets. I'm taking your baby home. I'm, I'm making sure they eat. I'm making, you know, I'm high fiving them. I'm picking them up. I got them in class. I see them in the hallway. Like, I spent a lot of time with your child. Yeah, it's love. It's love. If you got a big issue, I want you to feel uh, comfortable, you know, coming to me if if I'm the person you feel like you need to come to. Right. Uh, if we already have a relationship together, me and parents, you know, we got relationships together, you know, as far as being around each other before I even got into, you know, this sector. If if it's something that needs to come to me, cool. Mm-hmm. If it's something that needs to go to the coach, let it go to the coach. And I'm going to tell you that. You might want to have a conversation with the coach about that. If you just need to vent, and I think that's where our, prof- that's, that's where our profession is. Sometimes mm-hmm. parents, they just need to get something off their chest. It's just right. like that young person I had back in detention. I'll sit uh-huh. there and I'll listen and I'll take it in and I'll ingest it. And then I'll realize, I'll try to decipher what is that common, what is that end goal that they're trying to achieve. And a lot of times it's, you know, after they said so much stuff, they just be like, you know what? Don't even worry, Don't about, about, it. about it. Don't even worry about so it. So I, you sort of made me think, you flipped me on that because uh, I guess I was just looking at it, you know, straight black and white saying like, hey, the pecking order is, Go see that coach first before you come to me. But in this case, if they just need to get some stuff off their chest, it'll probably do the kid more harm if they go that route and go just spill it on coach. It's probably good that they came and dumped it on you, right? Or well, I mean, I for wrong? one, I, I don't – every situation is going to be a little different. If it's sure. some extreme, yeah, you need to have this conversation with the coach first. You okay. know what I mean? If it's, if it's more just curiosity mm. type stuff, I'm curious why this may happen. I'm curious uh, – I'm curious – What's the procedure of this, this, or this, or something like that? I'm like I said, I'm, I, I love. I told the parents in our first meeting, I want to be transparent. I'm not a big, I'm not into that that secrecy as far yeah. as these are your kids. Right. You know what I mean, if I'm being secretive, how are you gonna really feel comfortable putting your child on a bus to go to Chicago, Oklahoma with me? Yeah. You know what I mean, and we're yeah. almost in Arkansas. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like I, I don't, I don't want you to feel like I have any, uh, anything to hide. Right. But I don't. You know, I, I want, I want, I want to be successful at what we do, and what we do is work with kids. Your kid is in part of these programs. If you, if you feel like you need to come to me or say something to me, I want you to have a little bit of, uh, uh, be comfortable in that. Now, of course, you're gonna have certain personalities and, and certain parents that uh, you may have to have other people involved. Sure. But I, I think if I'm a parent, I like to know that I have, you know, a couple of avenues because I may have a question for the AD. Mm-hmm. that the head coach may not know about. Mm-hmm. I, you, you may have situations where that relationship isn't as positive as it could be. Sure. And so they don't, I, I can't go to this person or I don't want to feel like I can't go to this person. And so if I got to come in and be, you know, the liaison, so to speak, That's right. let's see how we can get these two people on the same page because I want your child to feel comfortable and happy and the whole nine. Um, what is your, your issue? Now, now at the same time, don't get it twisted. I've told some parents, you know what I'm saying? Like, look, we, we do things this way. We're going to do things this way. Like, I understand what you're telling me about the past and whatever happened at this place or that place. I get all that. But these are the things that we're trying to achieve here. Like, I want you to be a part of that. I want your child to be a part of that. Like, I want you to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. Like, we're gonna, like you said earlier, we're all going to be in this room together. We all need to find out how we can achieve that goal. And mm-hmm. Once we set those end goals, let's go get it. You know what I'm saying? Let's get a plan on how we're going to go get it. You know? I like get, that. I like that. That's how you do it. Yeah, I want you to have some input too. Now, if your input is, you know, how can I put it? Uh, like you keep that to yourself. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that ain't got no merit to it. There ain't uh-huh. a lot of value behind it. I'm not going to say it that way to your face, but yeah. I'm going to use some terminology to give you the impression that yeah. whatever you just said. You, said, you could have kept. You could have kept We that. could have done without that. Yeah, you could <laughs> put that in the bag, baby. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Don't even bring that out. Here's how we gonna close the show, man. Like I always do, I gotta I gotta spark those competitive juices again, man. Oh yeah. So sure. that means I want you to go back in your archives during your coaching career. You can think of a team in any particular game that got the best of you, but you knew that they were the better. You knew that y'all were the better squad, but for whatever reason, on that day, they brought it and y'all didn't, and they got the best of you. And if if you could go back and run it back, 
you know that you could change the course of history if you beat that particular team. Which team would it be? And I know I asked you specifically, like I always do, mm -hmm. but and you, you're a unique case because you know you got so many state tournament appearances. So I know you <laughs> well, got some. I've been blessed. Uh, I do, I do, I had quite a few. Um, man, man, you gonna you gonna have me put my head down on the table. <laughs> no, my bad. Just you know, nah, snatch the bandaid see, off. One, a game that I mean, like we we had a conversation earlier about some of them state semis, you know. There's one, and I, I I can't say the state final game in 2011 against Booker T, because right. that was just it was it was nothing we could do. I got I mean, you. You got Tyler Lockett, yeah. NFL they All Pro, much, man. You, man, they, they, they and they they were so disciplined and so talented, man. Right. And the reason why they undefeated, we played a heck of a game, but was, wasn't no getting over that hump. But that would obviously been a state final, uh, state championship. Man, I'm 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 gonna have to I'm gonna have to use one of my state semi games against uh, Memorial. Tulsa Memorial. Yeah, we mm -hmm. had a state semi game against Tulsa Memorial. The one I was talking about earlier, man. Yep. That that uh, we knew if we get over that hump that Saturday night, Saturday night was gonna be not 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 a breeze by any means, but you liked your chances. Man, the, <laughs> it, it it would it would have been whoever was coming out of that game had a really good chance. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. Yeah, they both matched up well, and, and we knew it was going to be a battle. I think we ended up losing by like four, three or four. Mm. But going back, it was just a couple of plays. You know, I think that would have just that would have changed uh, the outlook of a lot of things. You know, what I mean? a lot it. of things because it was it was it was against you know this phenomenal team and Memorial was just phenomenal. You know, and 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 our guys were just salivating at this opportunity to try to you know bring down Goliath, so to speak. And yeah. I don't want to put that on anybody's program. You know what I mean? That's I what everybody you. strives for. In yeah, sense, yeah. And but they, they, they were one of, they were the Giants. Were one of them, and they still are in 5A. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I mean, they, you know, our guys just, I mean, they weren't intimidated. They weren't, I mean, they went out and was just so hungry, you know, and they wanted it so bad. I, I would say that's probably one team, that was that was one game where you just watch guys want it so bad. You yeah. Know, and just didn't bounce their way. Um, that that was a huge one, and uh, and then this past year, man, the, the Broken Bowl game this past season, mm. our regional championship game, we won it. Yeah. We won it. So I would say it's 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 a little different because for me, watching this team grow and the heartache we had, and and I mean not heartache, but the, you know the battle the we had, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, trying to get guys to merge and trying to guy you got we do this and and trying to put in plays, you know, with guys that. that have different terminologies. It's the same play, you right. know, but they both learned it from two different entities at two yeah. different times. And, and there's, there's a, you know, there's so much. And then to go in that game, you know, that young man for Broken Boy had 53. I, I read about it. <laughs> I read about it. Man, I, I'm going to send you the film. I'm telling you, it it's a bad. highlight. It was a highlight. It was, it was, it was, it was impressive. It was, and I didn't coach against Trey Young like yeah. a ton of times and a plenty of guys. Hey, he put on the show that Boy, night. Boy, y'all numbers, huh? Oh, man, he put on, he put in work. Uh, you know, but to come out that second half, be down 13, come out that second half, win the third quarter, 29 to 12. Mm. And, I mean, I was like, I was watching them like, who are these cats? Like, right. Because at halftime, it wasn't a lot of screaming. I was just like, I told y'all, man, you know, it's a different beast now, man. It's March, baby. Mm -hmm. Like, these seniors, it's one and done for some of these cats. Like, it's 64 teams in, 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 in 4A. Like, 80-some percent of them already checked their staff in. Right. Like, they done. Right. Like, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to help y'all see the bigger picture. You know what I mean? Like this is this is what it's like. Right. And they came. I mean, they just <laughs> I, I, things have to be done differently. That's basically what I told them. Like all I've told y'all, like reaching and the watching the shots to the box and all that little stuff. I said, I, mean, I told y'all all that little stuff, man. This is when it comes to to, to the surface that you have these deficiencies, mm -hmm. and I've been. You've been talking about it all year. Now some of these deficiencies is coming into light. And you see what's happening. If you want it, you got to go. I mean, that third quarter, man, that second half, it just to watch a team. Just, I was like, oh, who was these cats? You're not standing no more. You know what I'm saying? You right. moving? Okay, okay. You you actually used the screen. Right. <laughs> like wow, okay. Like thank you. And then it just clicked. And then to watch them just kind of, you know, because that next night we went on and played Newcastle, and that was. You know, it was it was a good game, but it was it was a dominant performance on our end. I hey. think them guys, something clicked, mm. and then for them to not have a chance to go on and do something they haven't done in forty years, 
you know, it was heartbreaking and it's hard to grieve on. But those two games, Memorial, State Semis a few years back, you know, losing that game by a handful of points. Right. I think it was, it might have been like five, four, something like that. And then I think they went on and won the state finals by like 25. Mm. Uh, you know, knowing that, that and to see our guys want it that bad, that was a big one. Uh, and then obviously this year, because of the virus, the Rona. The Rona shutting everything the Rona down. shut us down. And and I think we had just turned over that leaf. Mm -hmm. that, where as, as coaches, you just go over a little scout report, you know, say a few things, work is done. Yeah. And y'all get between them lives, have fun, fellas. <laughs> Let's go. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna sit back and watch. Hey, I got popcorn. Y'all put on the show for you, boy. Best part. But <laughs> Coach Hunt, man. Bruh, I appreciate you finally man, stopping through finally, here. On the pod. Man, finally, man. People don't know how long we've been trying to get this popping, but you know, I guess this is one of the good parts, one of the silver linings in the yeah. Corona. We got a bunch of time, and you know, I definitely got to wish you luck, man, in all your endeavors. Because you know, I locked horns. We locked horns when I was at Piedmont. You were at El Reno. That's yeah. what we connected, and we just kept the relationship ever since. Got a chance to go back yeah. at it this year, Millwood. Yeah, that's yeah, right, yeah. Millwood with uh, with class and SAS. So it's just a beautiful thing, man. A good relationship. I hope we can continue it. Always, man. man. I certainly agree with you, man. Yes, I appreciate sir. you having me. I see you, you know, this is awesome.